woke up in Catavania, a remote part of the western Baja Desert. This place is so stunning. We woke up to a pack of coyotes investigating camp. I honestly think they were trying to lure Kicker away and ambush him, as we've heard this is a common tactic in this area. I got some really awesome photos while trying to keep Kicker safe with these wild creatures. My favorite photo is the one of the coyote hiding around the corner, unknowingly casting his shadow on the wall behind him. So eerie. The plan is to make our way south, surfing at all the surf breaks and finding whatever adventure we can find. Unfortunately, there isn't much for swell in the forecast in the foreseeable future. I'm traveling with my friend Dalton, who's an awesome photographer, and his girlfriend, Kristen Regal, who's a travel health coach. So I'm with Kristen. We're mobbing the Bronco, trying to get some shots. I'm gonna set this thing up on sand mode. Which is just, turn the button like that, and got sand mode going. Here we go. We just rallied the Bronco all the way up to this potential paraglider launch. The wind is a bit strong and a bit cross, but uh, there's some birds flying. I'm hoping to be one of those birds here in a minute. We flew here last year. It didn't go great. So I'm hoping this year goes a little better. Okay, launching. Paragliding is one of the most wild and free feelings I've ever experienced. To be able to step off the earth and fly is so cool. I'm able to perpetually fly because of the wind coming off the ocean, hitting the sand dunes, and creating what's called ridge lift. Like big old swing set. It's very strong and very cross. I can't penetrate north, but I can rip south with enough ridge lift that I'm able to stay buoyant but it's super fun right now. There's really very few places on earth that I'd rather be right now. That was a sick flight, super beautiful. After packing up the paraglider, the tide had gone way out and the sand was super hard packed with perfect, beautiful sunset light. The conditions were just too perfect not to rip the Bronco around and try to get a couple shots. I was laughing hysterically, smiling ear to ear. It kind of felt like skiing powder. I knew I was pushing the limits and ended up having a little too much fun, splashing the water and sending it way deeper than I expected. I really f***ed up. Bronco's dead. A small wave came in and I got much deeper than I intended. I think what happened is that the turbo sucked in some water and flooded the engine. Because the Bronco wouldn't start, we pushed the Bronco as far up the beach as we could, hopefully above the high tide line. 
Kicker and I ended up spending the night on the beach with the Bronco, and the next morning walked into town and asked some local fishermen to tow us back to camp. Super embarrassed, I could only imagine how it was perceived. Some young, dumb, rich white kid driving a brand new Bronco into the ocean. Give me a break. Honestly, I expected them to judge me and take advantage of my vulnerable and exposed situation. To my surprise, they treated me with kindness, grace, and generosity. Instead of dropping me off at camp, they brought me to one of the local Nico's house, which turns out to be the only surf shop in town. I was immediately offered a beer as about seven of us started to troubleshoot the issue. We spent a couple hours tinkering around, testing connections, drying off components, calling local mechanics to take a look. The next thing I know, it was a full-on community event. There was a group of us hanging out, sharing stories in broken English and my terribly limited Spanish. They made fresh sashimi and lobster salad. I felt like part of the family, part of the community. After all their help, I asked Nico, what do I owe you guys? He said, nothing, nothing. It's all part of the show with a warm and kind smile. Come to find out that day was Nico's birthday and it had been his only day off in the last couple weeks. The following day, Nico is headed into the closest town which is a couple hours away in hopes to pick up an ambulance for this small community that he lived in. Right before he left, I gave him $500 to divide amongst the people that helped me out. until next Tuesday. Yeah! Woo! About two hours later, the Bronco came back to life. I was so relieved as the closest Ford dealership was about nine hours away in La Paz. This community took me under their care with kindness and grace even when I was in a situation that I could have been easily taken advantage of. This is an experience and lesson I will remember for the rest of my life. Now I feel like I have lifelong, incredible friends in this beautiful little town. The first thing I did when I got back to service was download several learn to speak Spanish tools on my phone so that when I return I can properly thank everybody that offered me a friendly helping hand. When Nico returned from his ambulance mission, I asked him if he wanted to take the Bronco out for a little test drive. Of course the first thing Nico did was take us to the main 4x4 testing grounds in the area. I would say the Bronco handled this pretty well. Thanks for the help, man. Appreciate no it. That was a really good trip. You guys saved my ass. No yeah, appreciate it, man. No we'll be back. Everyone down here seems to have a special place in their heart for the older Ford Bronco models. How unstoppable it was. A go-anywhere workhorse, perfect for Baja's rugged terrain. The concern everyone has raised about this new upgraded Bronco was that it had a lot more electrical components and that there was potential for more to break. I've got to be totally honest with you. I had the same concern until I tested the theory in maybe a slightly reckless way. To my surprise, the Bronco came back to life with zero issues after having driven it in a way that no one in their right mind would ever do. All she needed was a little time to dry out, and I am so grateful to be back on the road. I was sweating it to say the least. The following day, we went out fishing with Nico and his partner. These guys work so hard, and fishing can be such a fickle industry. I really have so much respect for these guys, and man, they, they really work so hard. It was such a cool day seeing them in their element, doing their thing. Nico helped us out the other day, getting the Bronco running. Now we're going out with Leo and Nico. Hey, how are you? And uh, yeah, we're going to go Nemo, fishing. Nemo's boss. Nemo? Oh. Hell yeah. <laughs> We're about, I don't know, two miles offshore. These guys are working hard. Um, definitely a small boat. I think there's one life vest on board and definitely be a long swim. Dalton could swim it. I'd have to piggyback on his back. Uh, but uh, yeah, these dudes are efficient. 
It's crazy, there's like no GPS. I think they've got a radio, but they're finding these traps way out in the middle of nowhere. I have no idea how you have a sense of like where these spots are, but you need to know. Nice! Check. <laughs> oh yeah. <gasps> okay. I got to hand line catch some fish, which was the first for me, and then we filleted the fish right on the deck of the boat. This is by far the freshest fish I've ever eaten. So wild. It's a sharp knife. This was such a special experience that I will remember for the rest of my life. I thought I was in so much trouble having potentially killed the Bronco so far remote and at the very beginning of my partnership with Ford, but thankfully the Broncos are built tough and there's just some incredible people around the world that are just genuinely willing to help and want people to succeed. I will carry this with me for the rest of my life. On the next episode, we continue south in search of more adventure, try to stay out of trouble, and share what I have packed into this little Bronco, as well as some spearfishing and more. <laughs>